If You Were a Kid During the Civil Rights Movement by Gwendolyn Hooks, illustrated by Kelly Kennedy. A Different Way of Life. The Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865. Freed, Americans, freed African Americans from slavery, but even in the 1960s, a century later, they were not treated as equal citizens. They did not have civil rights. Laws in the South states kept black and white Americans apart or segregated. Imagine being an African American kid at this time. You would attend a different school than white kids. Your school would be in poor condition and you wouldn't be allowed to eat in restaurants that were only for whites. Instead, you would order your meals at the back door. On buses, you would have to sit in the back seats. Segregation was allowed under the law and things were supposed to be separate but equal for white and black people. But though life was separate, it was definitely not equal. African Americans were determined to be integrated into society and gain equal rights. Meet Connie. This is Connie Underwood. She lives with her parents and her older twin brothers, Robbie and Tommy, in Oklahoma. She and the twins have always been very close. She loves to climb her favorite tree to read and think up in its branches. Now she really has something, some thinking to do. The twins have a secret. Maybe that new boy who moved into the house behind her can help her solve the mystery. Meet Mark. This is Mark Jenkins. His family used to live in an Air Force base in Washington, D.C. Now he is to get used to a new school in Oklahoma. His old school was integrated. That meant African-American kids and white kids were in the same class. But his new school is segregated. Every kid is African-American. School starts soon, and Mark wants to make a friend before then. It's not easy being the new kid. It was a hot August in 1963. Connie grabbed a soda and headed outside. She climbed her favorite tree and hid in the shade. Her brother's voices floated into the backyard. She heard them use words like sit-ins, marches, and civil rights. Connie did not understand what it all meant. Her brothers were up to something, but what? Mark sat on the porch of his family's new home with two books. He was flipping back and forth between a mystery novel and the green book. Mark had started reading the green book during the long drive from Washington. His dad said that they would have starved in the South without it. As he read, Mark thought about his friends that he had left behind. The green book um, was used by African Americans traveling in the United States, um, and it listed hotels, gas stations, and restaurants that welcomed African Americans. Connie spotted her new neighbor. She climbed the fence to his backyard. They introduced themselves, and Mark told Connie about his move from Washington. Connie looked at her friend's books. I see you like mystery, she said. I sure do, Mark answered. Maybe tomorrow you can help me solve one, Connie said. Then she explained what had been going on with her brothers. That night, Connie heard the twins talking in the backyard. It's on for tomorrow morning, Robbie said. We meet downtown in front of Joey's ice cream at 10 o'clock. They'll think twice about not serving us, Tommy said. Connie's heart thudded. Her brothers were planning to demonstrate. She had heard that demonstrators often get hurt. Some were even sent to jail. The next morning, Mark watched Connie climb over the fence. We have to hurry, Connie said. I think the twins planned a civil rights demonstration downtown. I want to make sure they are okay. Mark hesitated. He was afraid, but he wanted to help his new friend. Connie and Mark ran downtown. African-American teenagers were marching on the street. Rows of marchers shouted, separate is not equal. They filled the street like the town's high school band did before a big football game, only these teens were not smiling. Connie and Mark squeezed through the marchers and looked for the twins. White people with angry faces watched the demonstrators. Some shouted ugly words. Connie remembered her parents talking about the African Americans who rode in the front seats of the buses from Alabama to Mississippi. They, they were hurt badly by angry white people. Could that happen to the twins? Suddenly, someone shouted, police. Connie knew the police sometimes hurt demonstrators. She grabbed Mark's hand. This was only Mark's second day in a new city. He'd never seen people so angry. We need help, Mark hollered. He and Connie squeezed to the back of the marchers as fast as they could. Then they sprinted to Connie's mom's house. Mark's heart thudded with each step. He hoped her mother would know what to do. Connie quickly told her mother about the twins. Mrs. Underwood was not angry. 
not at the kids at least. Let's go get your brother, she said. They're trying to do the right thing, but they should have gotten a permit first. Then the police wouldn't be able to arrest them. A few weeks later, Connie and Mark marched between the twins. Their parents were right behind them, carrying a parade permit. Now the police couldn't stop them. As they marched past Joey's ice cream, Connie looked at Mark and the twins. She knew they were all thinking the same thing. One day, we'll walk right in the front door. We will order ice cream sodas, and we will twirl on those red top stools. The Civil Rights Memorial is in Montgomery, Alabama. It honors people who died fighting for civil rights. On the stone wall, water flows across the words from Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Important cities for the civil rights movement are Washington, D.C., Birmingham, Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, and Little Rock, Arkansas. And important dates on a timeline, December 1955, Rosa Parks is ordered to give up her bus seat to a white passenger, which results in a bus boycott. September 1957, Little Rock 9 enroll in Little Rock Central High School. They are the first African Americans to attend an all-white school in Arkansas. August 1963, Martin Luther King Jr.'s March on Washington is attended by thousands of people, and he gives his famous I Have a Dream speech. July 1964, the Civil Rights Act ends segregation in public places and jobs. No longer can restaurants and hotels refuse to serve people. August 1965, the Voting Rights Act is passed to help, young, to help protect voting rights of African Americans.